Y'all, it's Kerr. I figured I'd make a video because I ain't uploaded one in a while. Trying to get this YouTube channel started going pretty good. And uh, today, I'm going to be dipping on the greatest dip ever invented. Maybe not be the first dip, but it, it is the best. Copenhagen Snuff. Now, I've already tried to crack this. This is fresh out of the roll that I got. But uh, it doesn't work, so right now I'm just going to use this knife. For some reason, uh, the snuff is a lot harder to crack than a lot of things, and same thing with long cut too, because it comes in the fiberboard can. This knife is dull. Hold on. All right, I found a screw, so we're gonna try to keep cracking this. Might as well just peel the whole wrapper off at this rate. So let's just do that. Where's the wrapper stick on that? Alright. For these, you might just want to do what my stepdad does and just peel the whole wrapper off. Because it's pretty damn it's pretty difficult. You know, we're just gonna see if this we break there it goes. Broke it the rest of the way. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Love the smell of Copenhagen snuff. I'll pack it. Try to get a pinch of it. Sometimes snuff is really hard to get a pinch of, so what you do, you stick your fingers down in there, then you gotta you rub it against the side of it because it has wax inside the fiberboard or coated around the fiberboard. And when you do that it gives you a nice it kind of packs it together for you. I ain't got nothing to spit in. Be right back. Alright, I found this cup in the trash can and I just cannot believe what I found inside of it. A pouch. Ugh. Smells like wintergreen too. Ew. I just can't stand wintergreen. Like ever since, like if you watched my other, my first video about how I told you how I started dipping, I just can't stand wintergreen after dipping grizzly wintergreen, but it, it'll have to work, so. Now Copenhagen Snuff, it's not, it, it it's a little bit finer than Redman Fine Cut, but it's more of like a wide feeling to it whenever you put it in your mouth. It doesn't just like fall apart as soon as it gets wet, also like Redman does, so it's a lot better to me. That's why it's my favorite. It's just, it's about like $5 a can, it gets expensive versus Redman being $1.29 a can. But you know, whenever I, ha I have the money for it, I go ahead and just go buy this, because it's my favorite really. Now, the reason I think the Copenhagen Snuff is my favorite is because back when I was younger and everything, and I'd always be going out to my dad's house, and whenever we'd get in the car together, uh, he'd put a dip in. And I bet you can guess what he dips, Copenhagen Snuff. So it's just, I remember that smell, and it was just like the best smell ever to me. I was all like, uh, whenever he would open a can, and it just like filled the air, and it was just all... Uh, and it was just amazing, so. You know, like I said before, when I wanted to start dipping, I was always like, hey, I wonder if I can do coconut snuff. But I didn't want to do fine cut, because I remember trying to fine cut before, and I was chewing, and it went all over the place. But, I don't know if you can notice, but, right my, or not really my shop, it's more like my brother's, but, I got a workbench out here that I do stuff on. Just got done making a pile. Gonna try to put a garden in for my dad. This spring, he's been wanting one for about two years now, and we ain't we ain't had a plow for it. So 
So, uh, yeah. I do it inside, but my mom was asleep. And so is my stepdad. And uh, she don't like me dipping in the house because my stepdad, who also dips coconut snuff, uh, he, when he used to dip inside, uh, he would always sit, he would like be laying on the couch and he would always have his spit cups laying on the ground. And you, I bet you can guess what happens after when he gets up and just knocks over, spills all over the carpet, gets little grains of Copenhagen just all in the carpet. And after that, my mom would just, no, she just quit the, letting dip inside the house. So, uh, I can give y'all a little tour around the shop if you want to. Uh, Alright, let's, let's do it. Alright, over here we have something that's even got even more horsepower than my truck. Suburban. It's got it's four wheel drive, uh, six lug axles. It's half ton now, but it, it's got some pickup to it. It's got 327 in it. 327 is an old Corvette engine. Of course, this one's modified being a truck, though, so I don't think it's going to be as fast, but it's it's got some pickup to it. I remember driving this one whenever my engine blew up. So, uh, it's good. It, it can, it's can it got a higher towing class than my truck, though, so that's it's pretty good. Um, over here's my workbench. You know, I got the toolbox, bucket full of burnt oil, air compressor, flashlight, auto repair manuals, pair of Crocs. Those are my buddies. I don't wear Crocs. A uh, knife case. A knife that I cut, cracked open can with. A CB antenna that used to be on my truck. Shit. A tackle box. Airsoft gun. That airsoft gun is amazing. I've been trying to get it fixed because I wanted to see what would happen if I put an airsoft pellet in there and then poured shotgun pellets down it and it got jammed up and clogged up and it just didn't work too well. So I've been trying to work on that and get it going good. It was a great airsoft gun. It has around 430 FPS to it. It's great. Me and my buddy play airsoft back in his backfield. It's fun. And, uh, oh, there's my cooler where I keep, I used to keep nails in it. I can't remember what I did with all them nails, but now I got a rope in there just for whenever I need to, like, pull something with a rope. Got three weed eaters over there that I need to fix. Ain't got around to it yet. Got the uh, bush trimmers over there. Uh, mulch shovel or snow shovel, but you know, we live in Tennessee, we don't get much snow. We live in middle Tennessee, so we're, we're in a basin. So by the time the snow gets through the atmosphere here, it already melts and turns into rain. So that, that's a mulch shovel. Yeah, I've had to do mulching before. It sucks in the summertime. Uh, got more weed eaters over there. Got a couple of sprayers for that. Got some boogie boards, uh, sheetrock couple pieces of uh, uh, plywood behind it got the garage door back there got some ramps for a trailer back over there all right now this over here is a John Deere lawnmower it's a D130 yeah D130 over we got a Yamaha 700 Grizzly here we got my brother's fast track mower yeah, my brother does uh, landscaping and mowing, so that's who I do more with and sometimes, sometimes. Oh, here's a trash can that I found that dadgum pouch in. Let's see, let's see, right in there. Uh, some oil from my brother's truck. Gas can for gas oil mix for his weed eaters and chainsaw. Here's his chainsaw. Uh, it kind of doesn't work right now. I don't know what's wrong with it. He's been working on it. Here's the welder that I tried to make the plow with and actually succeeded. Uh, over here, all his cleaners. And I don't know what that tube is for, but it was for something. Um, this is just the miscellaneous bolts and nuts. And uh, let's see. Over here, we got a toolbox. It's a nice toolbox. It's got all, just about everything you need into it. And uh, over here we got pressure washer, another toolbox, another toolbox, gun safe that doesn't have anything in it right now, I don't think. I, don't know, I ain't really looked inside, but that's his too. Over here we got our air compressor and his exhaust. My brother's truck that that exhaust came off of was a 
It's a 99 F250 Power Stroke. It's got like a six inch lift on it with mud tires. It's all right. I'd rather have an OBS for it if I would get a Ford, but I mean, that, I wouldn't mind having those either. Those are pretty cool. Just the way they look. What else was I going to show y'all? I had something else I wanted to show y'all. Uh, oh, I can't remember what it was right now. But, uh, yeah, and uh, on my first video, I got a comment asking what got me into logging. Really, it was uh, my brother started. He's three years older than me. And when he was 16 and 17 and 18, he uh, did logging. He worked at Bojangle for a little bit, but he didn't like it, so he quit. And uh, so he started logging with his buddy Lucas out there in uh, Milton. He had uh, plenty of trees out there that they cut down in cedar. Um, so, really, that's well, it's not really what got me into logging. What got me into logging was the lack of em uh, employment here in Murphy, bro. I've, I applied just about everywhere. Trying to find somewhere to work. But no one would hire me. So after a while, I was just like, okay, screw it. I'm just going to start logging. So, you know what I'm saying? Because that's like guaranteed money right there. I don't have to wait or anything. So I've been logging a little bit. We did great on our last run. Got $186, but my dad... Hey, we used his truck because I'm just going to be honest. If I can use a 2004 GMC Duramax 2500 HD versus my Chevrolet 1500, I'm going to use it. All right. So we were using his truck. And also, we're, we're going up to this grade in Alexandria to get to Grant Cedar Mill. They're real, they're real nice up there. But... Uh, we were going up this grade and... All of a sudden, power steering goes out. So I'm just like, okay, what in the world is going on with this truck? <laughs> I was like, I hope I have not broken this $23,000 truck. So we pull over, and, you know, we look under it because it sounded like something was falling out of it. So we look under it, and we didn't see anything missing. So we're like, okay. So we just kept on going. Get, get up the hill and start going down again. I noticed the battery lights on. So I'm just like, okay, this is different. This is weird. What in the world is going on here? Then all of a sudden the brakes, uh, you, you know how things have power brakes in them now? Yeah, the power brakes went out, but the brakes still worked just barely because it wasn't powered. I was like, oh crap, because the road to Grant Cedar Mill is extremely curvy and you've got hills on just about you've got a steep hill and a lot of curves so i'm like oh crap i got no power steering no power brakes and hope i don't fall off this hill so we make it to grant cedar mode just fine all right we get there we park and we turn it off because we're like okay something's going on with this thing I want to know what it is. So we popped the hood and we look at the belt. The belt was off. The serpentine belt was off. So I was like, okay, this seems to be an easy fix. So I asked them if they had any breaker bars with three quarter inch or a wrench with three quarter inch drive. Not three quarter, half inch. I, I get my drives confused. But, uh, so they said, yeah, we ought to have some. So they called one of the guys down there, and he went into the shop and brought out a wrench set for me. And uh, so we get it back on, and it's still extremely loose. So we're looking, trying to find out what's... We're looking, trying to find out what's making it this loose. And it was the idler pulley. The idler pulley bearings wore out in it. So that's what we heard falling out was the bearings inside of it. And that's what made the belt come off was it was like loose. And so it just kind of loosened up and like spun off itself. So we called down there. 
we don't call, they call, uh, advanced auto parts down there in Alexandria or wherever they are. And they delivered us a new Isley Pulley. Now, Grant Steer Mill is so nice that they wrote it off as one of their expenses to where we got $20 off of it. It, it would have been a $40 part. But no, they're, they're so nice that they wrote it off as one of their expenses. So, it was 20, it wound up being 26 something. So, they just took that off of the logs that we had. And so we wound up leaving there at the 160, which is a lot better than what we had ever made before. Before we'd been making like $60 a week and $80 a week. This time we did great. So I wound up getting like 70 a piece. It was like 77 a piece. So we, we did good this that time. But back to my main point is to what got me into logging, that, that was pretty much it, is no one would hire me, and my dad has a lot of property out there with a lot of cedar trees, and my dad's not really into letting me log because he thinks that I can do a lot better somewhere else, and I don't know what, what really his problem is, but for some reason he won't, he, he don't want me to be logging. I think it's because my brother did it. My brother had sold some money from him. And he don't want me to wind up being like him, which I can understand that. But I learned from my brother's mistakes, and I'm not going to repeat them. I'm not going to steal them from anywhere, really. So remember, kids, stealing is wrong. But, uh, you know, my brother did it, and... My dad had the property, and he had plenty of cedar tree for it. Like, there's like four acres just absolutely full of cedar trees. And I'm going to wind up building a house out there eventually With uh, when, when I graduate and get up enough money. I'm going to build a house out there. Probably like a log cabin or something. That'd be cool. But... So yeah, that's the story of how I started logging, and my favorite dip of all time is Copenhagen Snow, just to let y'all know that. I don't know if y'all are interested, but I would definitely recommend it if you are into natural flavored dips. I would definitely recommend it, but if you don't like the fine cut, they make Copenhagen Long Cut. It's the same flavor, just long cut, and I would do that, but you know, for some reason, with the long cut... I get tired of it, but with the fine cut, the snuff, I, I don't, I don't know why. And that's, that's also the story of how I saved my dad over a thousand dollars, just having to have it towed back to a diesel mechanic, and then having the diesel mechanic look at it. And so, I'll see y'all in the next video. Uh, I'll try to start posting some more soon. I already know what I'm going to post about. But uh, just remember, always keep them lips packed. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.